So this trip was unique in that we put the kayak in the boat to transport the kayak to the fishing grounds. The kayak is very lightweight, so it's very doable to move it into a boat or a truck. You just lift it. I can do it on my own. It's easier with a helping hand, of course. Now, once we got to the fishing grounds, the kayak went in the water, and I loaded everything up. I was going to be tossing eels during this trip. I just have a very stout, short fishing pole there. Figured it'd be easier, more compact to use. Definitely don't want to be using a big surf casting rod from the kayak. It's just too much. And pack as lightly as possible. I just took a few hooks, some leader, and some eels. And of course my camera gear. And off I went. We have a whole bunch of camera angles in this video report. So right here we have the stern cam and you can see I'm pedaling along. Just toss the eel out maybe 100, 150 feet behind the boat. And just pedal at a very slow speed and when you get a hit Man, it just jerks the whole kayak around. It's very cool fighting fish from this platform. A lot different than a boat or from shore. Here I'm getting tugged along. At this point, I knew this was a very good fish. I had lines in for roughly two minutes. So this was a really terrific surprise. My first keeper from the Hobie, getting it close to the boat now. It looked pretty goofy. <laughs> And the hook did not just pop, it actually broke. Pretty disappointed. It was a good fish and the hook actually just snapped. I've had that happen a couple times in my life. I was using Gamagatsu octopus hooks, seven knot, which are usually pretty good. But there were plenty of fish around and I'm going to pedal like crazy to get up to some birds that were working here. The wind was probably blowing about 25 miles per hour and it was blowing offshore so the waves weren't too big but there was a tight little chop for the kayak. I did take some spray but on a nice sunny day, warm day, it's really nothing to worry about. Especially when you got birds like that in the distance, you know this fish there. I'm not sure what max speed is on the Hobie, but I'm pretty confident I could reach 10 miles per hour maybe. You move pretty good and it's very easy to go quickly, much easier than paddling. So instead of trolling, I actually cast the eel towards the birds and I could see small fish popping on top. I didn't know if they were bluefish or schoolies, so I let the eel do its thing, swim down to the bottom. And again, the hits are great. It just jerks the whole kayak around. And you start going on a good old fashioned Nantucket sleigh ride where the fish just pulls you around even through the waves. Figuring out the best way of holding the rod is a little bit of a work in progress. Right now I just got it in my armpit which works pretty good. At no point did I feel as if the kayak was going to tip. Even when these 
fish were straight up and down beneath it. Felt very stable. Of course, I was cognizant to keep my body in the center of the kayak, but you really have no choice with the way the Hobie seats work. They just position you right in the middle of the kayak, so it's very sturdy. Starting to get the fish a little bit closer to the boat. All of these fish were just absolutely beautiful, and these are definitely one of those trips that I'll cherish and remember during the winter. I mean, this trip was not a day in the making. This trip was years and years in the making. I think these fish were, for the most part, scrounging the bottom. Now, obviously, there were birds working there, so there was some sort of bait that they were chasing, but for the most part, the real big fish were just hanging out by an underwater rock pile that I know from personal experience holds crabs and lobsters, all sorts of creatures around during September, peanut bunker, butterfish, mackerel, and of course the crabs and the lobsters. Beautiful day on the water. Had the whole place to myself. So here's a pretty typical bite. Trolling along, you feel the bite, drop the rod back for just an instant, and then set the hook. And here we go again, getting pulled. If I had to, I could pedal against the direction that the fish was taking me. So if, for example, I was being pulled into an area that I didn't feel comfortable being pulled into, I am confident that I could propel the kayak in the opposite direction and overpower the fish without much of a problem. But I'd rather have them just tug me around. It's a lot of fun. Just another real nice quality fish, 20 to 30 pounds. I got one fish during this trip that I felt was probably 40. I don't even know if I show you the video. There's so much video here that I'm just gonna have to save it for next time and share it with you throughout the winter months. During this trip, I believe I landed close to 15 fish before calling it quits, most of which were that size. A couple schoolies mixed in. Now as the sun was sinking lower, as often happens, the bite picked up. If you're on fish and they're not biting, just wait until a sunset or a tide change. That can be all it takes to really turn the bite on. So these fish were biting all day, but as the sun sank lower, they got much more aggressive. And for example, as I was reeling the eel in to check it, oh my God. just to make sure everything was all right, this happened. And I'll show that to you one more time. Just a great topwater hit. I saw the fish, easily a 25, 35 pound fish, somewhere in that range. And again, there's just so much footage that I could be sharing with you, and it takes so long to put these video re reports together that I'm going to end with this fish right here. And the action continued right into darkness. Pretty sure I probably could have stayed on the water till 10, 11 o'clock at night catching fish if I wanted to. It was just one of those terrific days. But we'll end with this one. And the sun had set. I was the only person fishing for as far as I could see, which with the popularity of fishing the Cape these days, it's not often that you have a really good bite all to yourself which just made this night that much more special. 
So now I got the rod butt right in my stomach. Nope. Back to the armpit. That mustn't have felt too good. This was one of the better fish of the evening. Digging for the bottom. Lots of rocks and barnacles in this area, so I had a pretty tight drag. If I had to guess, my drag was probably set seven, eight pounds. And with that stout rod, a lot of that pressure and power gets transposed right to you, the angler. So you really feel every kick, especially with the 40 pound Power Pro I was using. No stretch, so you feel every beat of the tail especially when the fish gets close. Starting to feel much more comfortable landing fish from the Hobie. Granted, this was only my second trip out in the kayak. Starting to feel much more comfortable especially landing these big fish. This guy absolutely engulfed it. And that's just a sign that these fish are feeding. The feed bag's on. The bite is on. There is no doubt about it. Sometimes you just barely hook the bass when using bait. And they may just be nipping at it in those instances, not really feeding. This fish was feeding. And I'm going to say goodbye with that. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Catch them up.